NPC stuff will not be held responsible for any issues that are, may arise by following this video. This is for informative purposes only. Installation is done at your own risk. This is Mike from NPC Stuff. We're going to show you now how to install the thick pads onto the Kai NPC Studio. All right, all we're going to need for this install here is the NPC without the thick pads. As you can see here, ours already has thick pads on it because we were testing, but I'm going to show how to install um, right now. Either way, this one already has it. Yours will not when we start, obviously. Uh, here we have two tools. We just have a Phillips screwdriver with a small tip, and we have a small screwdriver with a, a standard, which I've taken uh, electrical tape to the tip of it. You're gonna see why um, soon, but basically it's to make it softer on the tip. Um, and then we have our NPC stuff thick pads. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna get our stuff out of the way here. Uh, your best bet is to try to find something like a pillow or foam that you can put down. Uh, here we have a piece of egg crepe foam that we're gonna use. And we're going to put this NPC on its backside. And now, on the backside of the NPC, you're going to see there's a few... Uh, there's screws. There's a screw here, here, and then there's three hidden screws. There's going to be one underneath here where it says NPC Studio, one at the beginning of the serial number, and one under the caution. Now we're gonna go to the next step, which is gonna be opening this front panel here. All right, you're gonna notice once all your uh, screws are out that you're gonna be able to lift a little bit with your fingernails. The reason I put this here, you're gonna see now, because you have this going in to try to open up the NPC and pry it. Another option would be use something plastic, but you don't wanna scratch it, so you're gonna to wanna to use something like this. And you're gonna feel it, and it's gonna pop off these clips. Unfortunately, it's gonna feel like it's breaking, but it's actually just popping off these clips, but don't force it, because if you force it too hard, it will. So don't try to get, try on the backside, but be careful over here, because this USB, that's holding it down right there. So just get it a little bit up here, and then bring it over to the side. Once you get to the side, you can bring it side to side, and you'll see it starts to pop up. Once you get to the front, same thing here. You can also drag it a little bit and the casing will start to come off here. You're going to want to leave this back side for the last because like I said, that's where the USB port and the power button are. So once we have this all done and out, you're going to notice what I mean about the power button. See how the power button's in there? You want to slide this forward and then up that way you don't break the power button off. Now we have our bottom plate off. We're gonna put that aside. And we're gonna turn this upside down here. It's a pretty simple unit inside. You have all the boards here. You have a board here, which is just the main one. Then this one for the Q-Links, the LCD, and then the encoder board. What we need to do is we need to get this board off here. We don't need to get the encoder board off and we also need to get the LCD screen. So first things first, we're gonna take off the LCD screen. So now we're gonna go to the next step. There are five that hold the LCD screen on. They're right here. We're going to see there's two um, notches here that are holding this on. When you pull these two notches here, it's gonna lift up the LCD screen so you can pull it out. Then here, you're gonna see what I always say, it's blue side up on this one. You're gonna pull this ribbon out just to get it out of the way. Be careful not to scratch your LCD screen or get too much dust on it because when you put it back in, you don't want to have anything in between. So we're going to put this aside now. And now we're looking at the whole board here. So in this section now, we're going to take all the screws out of the black screws that are holding this board out. You're going to notice the screws have arrows, the ones that need to be taken out. Keep in mind, these two front screws right here and here, these screws have a flat. So remember when you're putting it back together, the flat screws go down here. So now we're going to take out all these screws here. And for this, for this particular uh, one, I'm going to use a power screwdriver just because it's going to be less time. Don't ever use the power screwdriver to put back in because if you do it to put back in, you can over tighten too much. But to take them out, it will be okay if you do have a power one to get them all out in a quick fashion. All 
Uh, now I have everything out. The next thing I'm gonna do is there's a little clip here. You're gonna pull forward these two tabs and then you're gonna pull the blue side up out because we're gonna need to pull this out. Uh, this can be a little tricky over here because you have this wire that wants to get in the way and this ground lead that wants to get in the way. So you're gonna push both these kind of to the side. Be careful with them. And then you're gonna be able to pull the board up. It can be tricky sometimes. And you'll have to move it just a little bit once you get this over. Like I said, in this area, you'll find that it can be a little tricky getting over this. But once you have that out, it allows you to move this out of the way so you can reach your pads. And now we see our pad sensors with our pads underneath and we're gonna go to the next step. Okay, now that we have everything out of the way, we're gonna pull our pad sensors off. Uh, here's our pad sensors. You can see this side, the dull side, is the side that's gonna go against the PCB board. That's what it's actually doing the sensor. Um, yours might have little marks on it from being used a lot. Um, and that side's smooth. Um, the corks, they have optional, I'm sorry, the pads have optional corks available um, that'll make them more sensitive. Um, our corks gonna go are gonna go on the side with that's not the side that goes against the PCB. It's gonna go against this side. So it's gonna be the shiny side, not the matte side. So the shiny side. So when you put the corks on, if you're gonna decide to put the corks on, um, the corks are gonna give you more sensitivity over just the pads themselves. So there are two ways you can do the corks. You can put one uh, cork on, you're gonna take off the adhesive on it, and you're gonna put the cork on just like that, just over the top of the black. Um, when you do that, you can also, there's two ways. You can put one set of corks on and you can double them up. If you double up the corks on them, they, they're gonna be ultra sensitive and they might even become too sensitive at times or you'll have to pull up a pad a little bit. Um, some people like it like that, but I think the best way to do it is just to use one cork. But if you want it ultra sensitive, you can use two corks. But when you use two sets of corks, you do run into that area sometimes where you might find double triggers. So once you do that, if you decide to put the corks on at all, you can put the corks on and they go on each pad. So put them on each pad after you take the adhesive off and they're gonna go on the back side, the shiny side. Uh, we're not gonna put them on ours on this particular unit. Um, they, are, they, are, they do work well if you just use one set of corks. Um, if you use two, it might be a little bit, you know, a little more sensitive or you can use none at all. We're gonna use none at all on the ones we're doing here and we're gonna go ahead and pull all our old pads out on your unit, they're gonna be the original pads. Ours happen to already be changed. And we're going to take our new NPC stuff, black thick pads. And we're gonna go ahead and put those in here where the old ones were. Move this out of the way. Make sure everything goes where it belongs. Make sure everything's sitting flat. Once we have everything sitting flat, we're getting in. Then we're gonna take our sensor sheet. And again, remember, shiny side or the side that you have the corks on is gonna go down towards here. You're also gonna see the logo is gonna go like this. It's gonna be upside down, so it's facing the front. And it's gonna go just like this. Once you have that position, make sure it's positioned on all the holes. And then we're gonna put CB back into place. This can be tricky sometimes. Again, same thing that you have over here. One thing to do also is you can turn over the unit and make sure that your pads, oh, the LCD window came out again. Make sure your pads are all sticking through properly. And turn it back over. Make sure everything's settled down. Once you get everything pressed down, make sure this is over here like this. So you have this and it's not stuck underneath because this has to go here. Make sure this is on top here so it can go down. And now we're ready to go to the next step. All right, now we're gonna put all our screws back in like they were. Remember the bottom two here are gonna be the flat top black screws. And then you're gonna put your screws where only where you see the arrows. Make sure you do not put screws inside these because those 
are different. Those are not ones that need to be put in right now. That we have all our screws back in, we're gonna go ahead and put the LCD screen back in here. And these things kind of clip in here and here. So once we have that in there, then we're gonna go ahead and put our screws back here, 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 and here. Uh, so once we get those screws in, then we're gonna first put our ribbon cables back in. This one goes in like this. And then you push back on the thing here. This one doesn't have the clip, so this one just presses back in like this. So now we have those in, we're gonna put those screws in, and then we're gonna put our back plate back on. So now we're gonna to go to the next step. All right, so now we're gonna get our screws in. All right, now that we have that all done, we're gonna kind of push this down out of the way, and you're gonna put your top back on. The top, you wanna to do the back first, so the uh, power button goes in without any problems, like I'm having right now. There you go. Put that in so the power button and the USB are sitting there. And then just like before, you're gonna just snap it back shut and you're gonna feel it shut. So now we're snap shut, our black thick pads are on. You can see the thicker pads are here. We have our MPC Studio with the MPC Stuff Thick Fat Pads. Uh, the pads have a softer material and they're thicker. You can get them only at mpcstuff.com.